Good evening and a very warm welcome to the Grassroots Weekend, the show on the Kids Voice Box. And as you can see, we've got a superstar guest in front of us. And what? A, where is he? It's Tom Hanks. Look, <laughs> <laughs> it's actually Rob Pope. But I'm not going to ask Rob any of the questions. The kids are going to do that for me and you're going to find out a lot about it. So I'm going to hand it over to Dan and Jaden from the Kids Voice Box and fire away. Introduce yourselves first, lads, yeah, and then so you're Yeah, Dan, Jaden, and we're back with the third interview this time with Rob. We had Steve Smith and Fanny Jeffers, so get us started with, basically. So, Rob, my first question is, on your book, which is actually right here, it does say 422 days, yeah. How long did it really take? How long did you, like, feel, how long did you feel like it took for you to complete, yeah, <laughs> I don't know. I just want to. I just want to go back there now. So not long enough, you know. Sort of if uh, if I have my way. Not long uh, enough. Yeah. Fifteen thousand miles. Well, in the in the film, obviously, like sort of, you know, I was recreating the run that Forrest Gump did, yeah. and so he did. It was three years, two months, fourteen days, and sixteen hours, and um, to it do. Took. Yeah, to do the same distance because obviously I didn't set out to run a particular length of time. Yeah. Uh, but I did have a mileage figure in mind, which is one that someone had worked out, and it was 15,248 miles. Well, then you did another 400. C a couple more, I don't know, yeah. And um, basically, because the route, you know, it's not an exact thing, so there was, I was borrowing some from the film, Key Landmarks, a, la a map that you see behind the newsreader. Yeah. And then I had to do a little bit of a uh, creative stuff myself because you only have that map up until about three and a half times across America. So I had to do the rest bit and then, so Middle. yeah. And I, like, sort of, uh, I, I actually hit that 15,248 at the side of like what they call an interstate over in the States, which is their motorways. And um, so I wrote a little bit, sort of just to sort of, you know, me distance on a little bit of a, a steel gear that was sticking out of the desert and there uh, and then after that everything was about it did look tough didn't it it, it was, was tough yeah it was tough like but uh it was doable you know but it was fun you, you as have well. done it yeah, <laughs> yeah. 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 took over a year well, yeah, like sort of it uh, you know because it was probably about a year and a half in total but because I'm not American I wasn't allowed to stay in the country for the whole time so every now and again I'd have to come back for a few weeks uh, yeah, just to, to um, so yeah, I had like so you lied. It. No. <laughs> uh, well, I certainly sort of didn't say to them um, how long I planned to be on the country on the first time I went there, and every time I went back in, I was getting more and more nervous that they weren't going to let me back in, you know. And so, um, yeah. especially when the immigration officer, I think on the second time I went back, uh, I said like, oh, "I'm running across America," and he was just like, shrugged. And I said, you know, like, Forrest Gump, and he was just like, don't know, you know, and I said, like, the film, the movie, and he went, I've not seen it. And I was just like, mate, yeah. have, you, have you not seen it? Well, he was he was probably about 35, this fella, so he would have been alive when it come out. Right. And, like, you guys know it, you know. No, I mean, I, I only know because of I've been studying, yeah, and everything. Do you like the film, though? Have you yeah, seen it? Yeah, it's yeah, good, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now... Go on, Jaden. Yeah. yeah. Did you have any motivation to like? Did you know like the route you were gonna do, or uh, did you just like ran and then hoped? No, like so. I well, I knew what I wanted to do in advance because I'd sort of you know made that map ahead of time, uh, but I didn't necessarily think I was gonna be able to do it. So all I wanted to do was get from where I started in Mobile, Alabama just to Santa Monica in uh, California, which is part of Los Angeles, uh, uh, Santa Monica. And after that, it was a bonus. So it was a bit like I knew what the course was and it was just how far along that I could get. Yeah. Gosh, right, back to me, yeah. So nickname, clearly, the real life Forrest Gump. <laughs> Is there any other significance behind it and did you have any sponsorships between you or maybe from Tom Hanks for completing his run? I, I, I wish I had a... <laughs> um, no, like, so I, I think Tom Hanks might be a little bit sick of Forrest Gump now because whenever he seems to be on a chat show, everybody brings, brings it up. You know, he'll be promoting his latest film and then someone will do a joke about the, about the film. And um, so I don't know even if he knows about it, to be honest, because the thing is with uh, the Forrest Gump thing, yeah. you know, um, 
the label gets bandied about quite a lot because you know so, you know someone like goes for a run you know so will shout like run forest at them you know and uh, yeah. especially if you've got a beard or long hair and so um yeah i I, I didn't set out to get the nickname. I just set out as you know, to do, to do the run. But yeah, like going back to the motivation before, like sort of you know, in America, he's probably the most famous long distance runner because they've never had any really you know people who've who've been massive stars like Mo Farah. They've had a lot of good sprinters, but not really a lot of good long distance athletes and stuff. Um, you know, in sort of yeah. recent memory, so everyone just thinks of Forrest Gump. And um, I didn't know that's just from a movie. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah. How did you feel after running all that fifteen thousand six hundred and twenty-one miles? It was a bit weird, really, um, because I sort of I'd actually done a stop not that far uh, prior to that because um, like sort of my my missus was expecting like sort of our, our baby. And so I could have finished the the end of the run, um, but the whole thing didn't mean anything to me, and um, without having them there, yeah. so I stopped two hundred miles before the end and went back, um, you know, so, so I could be like not risk missing the birth, and then I came back with them. So when I stopped before I went home, and it was not long after I got to that fifteen thousand two hundred and forty eight miles, when I hit that landmark. That was the big emotional thing because I knew at the end there was going to be loads of people there and, you know, um, I was more sort of, you know, interested in the future really rather than the run. So, yeah. you know, it, it, took, it took ages for it to sink in afterwards. Yeah. And when you, just going back off now from the trip across America, you've completed many marathons. When you did the Guinness World Record for the costume marathon, yeah. was that an intention? To like bring it home with you, or was it just taken by surprise? Well, that was um, when I came home for that for, for the birth of the baby. I came home for like three weeks, um, yeah. and like sort of you know I was back for about like sort of a week or so before she was born, and two weeks later we were going back to the states. Now, because I was raising money for two charities, the World Wide Fund for Nature and Peace Direct it was important for me not to slip off the radar because yeah. people were just like, oh, has he finished? Oh, I don't, I don't know, stopped, you know, yeah. and so that's it. And so I did three marathons in three weeks under three hours. And so I did Manchester, um, I think in about sort of 2.56. And um, I was pacing some lads from the Liverpool Running Club uh, to their like, first under three hours. And so that was great. Then the um, the week after I did Brighton and I think that was in two fifty three, but the London one uh, I knew I was gonna try and do the world record thing, but I didn't really want to make a big deal out of it. You dress up in a costume for it. Yeah, well I was I was definitely gonna do that, it's but like you, well you get loads of people running in costumes yeah, for the marathon. Yeah, um, a few years ago I did one. I did a biking marathon with cool. my dad and someone had like one of the tall bikes dressed up as a Lego character. Did you dress up? No. No. Serious, serious athlete here, man. This is good. I'm, I'm, I'm doing this. Oh, that's how long. Yeah. Go on, Jaden. Honestly, not honestly. Obviously, you did stop at some point, but did you ever want to completely just stop it and then go home, or did? Hey, well, people said like, um, did I ever want to give up? And I'd be like, every morning when I was either yeah. getting up out of my motel room or getting out of my tent, you know, sort of, uh, because, you know, I was running like 40 miles a day, like sort of towards the end, like, I think the overall average was 37, but towards the end, it was like 45 miles a day, every day, and like no days off. And so it was just really hard. And, um, and you'd be like, you get up and you'd be like, I just can't do this. And then you're like, well, you did it yesterday and the day before. Why can't you do it now? And you're in the middle of nowhere, so what are you going to do? Stay here all day and then get up the next day and go, oh, I can't do it, you know. And so... Uh, live out in the desert. Yeah, there, yeah. there was no... The only ways I was going to, like, quit was if I was, like, physically broken. So I just couldn't move forward. Or if I just didn't have enough I money to I know you eat. suffered from shin splints as well, didn't you? Yeah. As I went up and reading the book, you said. A, a load so, of yeah. injuries, yeah. That was the first bad one. And uh, they said, I had, I had like big blisters. They they happened early like on. Natural, but though, yeah. Well, they, you know, they're they always going to happen, you know. And so, but then when that thing of my shin happened, 
Um, you know, I thought that was game over because normally uh, you're off for like six to eight weeks, like if that happens. Mm. And then I managed to see a physio, got uh, advice and got like the shit all strapped up. And then uh, I got like a similar sort of injury, but in my Achilles tendon. But um, I just basically did the same Run thing. To, yeah, off, yeah, yeah. Just went a bit slower. Yeah, not too bad. My fourth one here now is, is there any particular reason why you became a runner over like beforehand, like when you were saying just before the show about you were in prime school with Fanny Jeffers and stuff? Yeah. Did you like have any thoughts to become a runner for the future? No, not really. Like sort of, yeah, because I, like, I went to St Swithin's uh, Juniors in Crocky and so I was like, sort of, I think a year above Fanny. Um, and so we both played in the same school B team together and the yeah, funny so thing is, yeah, like... You were the better runner. Well, he was the better runner. He was the better he runner. He was the better runner, yeah. The better and footballer I was massively the football better goals. footballer, but yeah, well, he certainly uh, became a much better footballer than me. Uh, I don't, goals, really, haven't you? Yeah, I don't know if I've ever become a better runner than him. I've run further than him, but I'd be interested to see... It'd be, it'd be dead interesting to see what, well, what he could have done. And also, uh, Steve McManaman as well was a fantastic cross country runner. Must be a fairly similar age as well, you know. And so I don't know if those yeah. two ever ran against each other. But um, in seniors, I did like cross country, but and I was like, you know, I was running for Merseyside and and stuff yeah. like that. But I didn't want to put enough effort in because I sort of saw people who were like doing all the training all the time, and they weren't necessarily, you know, they weren't going to like the Youth Olympics or anything. I just thought, God, he's doing all that work and he's still not doing anything. So like, I, I like running, but I don't want to run so much that I just end up not enjoying it. You know, I'll run to the amount that I want to run. And the interesting thing is, yeah, exactly. But the interesting thing is, um, everybody matures at a different age. You know, they like, sort of see, like, you know, Franny went from being a runner to a footballer. Yeah. Um, like, it was only when I actually moved to Australia, uh, like, to work for a few yeah. years, that I just really focused in. I just wanted to meet new mates, so I joined an athletics club and got, like, sort of a lot better, you know, and so... Yeah. That that opportunity is always going to be there. Now there's running clubs everywhere, where you, wherever you go, like exactly. you say, you were with Merseyside and stuff. Mm. It's everywhere. Yeah. And there's park runs on the Sunday. Yeah, I as do well. park runs. Yeah. yeah, I do a two point four k every Sunday. Well, yes, they obviously called off. Yeah, do you go to the mystery one, do you know? No, do you no, go just to witness. Just oh, the witness one, fair yeah, just the one yeah. at the end of my road, yeah. Yeah. So it's pretty good, two point four k. Oh, the great. Actually, yeah. about fifteen minutes so far, but. Well, in two weeks. Fair do, because that's the next goal. We've got to get a 14 in front of your time, I reckon. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. well, go on, Jay. So you've completed a lot of your goals. Do you have any goals now or for the future? Yeah, there's like sort of a, like lots of them really. Like sort of, um, was that? Any more running? Well, I'd love to run across Australia. Oh, um, you know, sort of actually when I, um, the part of the time when I was in America, like half the time I was supported by people and half the time I was on my own and I was pushing all my stuff in like a three wheel jogging pram and I actually bought that pram in Australia with the aim of running across Australia so well, I think certain, well, yeah exactly and then uh, maybe I need to, that, that one in America is a little bit broken now so maybe I need to buy one in America to run across Australia I'm just looking at your hat now I think you've got the same hat on here as the front cover <laughs> it, it is it's yeah. the same yeah, hat. It is. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Ah, you know, at the end of the day, like, sort of, um, yeah. got a lot of respect for me, illustrious hosts, here, you know, so I've got to, I've got to come prepared. And uh, the same shoes same as shoes, well. That, yeah. um, right. These shoes actually did Boston Marathon in, and they probably ran about 500 miles, those ones. But here's a cool thing about the cap. Um, so obviously it's like a, a bit of a pink now in it, really, rather yeah, than yeah. red. And I thought that was just because I'd washed it and I'd been caught wow. in the rain and sweat, of course. But it actually isn't that, because if you look on the inside, it's bright red. Oh. So that's the sun. They've done that. Oh. Just literally so just running in the desert well, and the sun. Because you're from just in America, because there's definitely no sun here right now. Yeah. <laughs> snow over the weekend. Exactly. Well, I actually was debating running back from here tonight to, to ours. Um, but you know, the you can't, well, you've done, it, yeah, you've but done it's, 15, it's lethal outside, though. You know, it's sort of, um, 
Hey, um, you can walk into school, which is a five minute walk for me, it's slippy. Yeah, it's a good excuse to be late though, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm always on time. Good I, can't wait yeah. I fell over in the snow. <laughs> <laughs> I made a massive snowball on Saturday and it turns out it's still there. I tell you, well, we're talking about it being cold today though, but uh, it's not compared to some of the temperatures I, I, I got in the States, like sort of uh, got, got minus yeah. 19 was the... Uh, what? Degrees what? or Fahrenheit? Uh, well, yeah, we'd actually, that, it got to minus 1 Fahrenheit, so, but yeah, minus 19 C, Gosh. and so, um, so how it's like... You, what, how could you even move in that? Uh, we well, should have minus three. There's no such thing as bad weather, it's just bad clothes, isn't it? You know, <laughs> so you just lay it up. You and, can um, say that. Yeah. <laughs> That's a new motto. Yeah. No, no things are bad clothes. Or, no. No such thing as bad, bad weather, weather just bad, bad clothes, clothes. Yeah. yeah. It doesn't actually work as well Push in massive day. heat as it does in the, uh, you know, so at the end of the day, because like even if you run along Stark, it's like the only way you're going to get cold there is when you get arrested and put in jail and hope you've got air cold, you know, so, yeah. but um, yeah, like when I was, when it was super cold, it was just like, you know, I'd have like a pair of like, you know, running leggings on, then some trackies over the top, I'd have a t-shirt on, a long sleeve, a tracky top, a coat, um, a, like a, a, a hat, you know, woolly hat with my ears. Sweet. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, the thing is, I had the snood on, um, and I'd also have shades on, not because it was bright or anything like that, it's just to stop your eyelids sticking mm. together, you know, and yeah, basically just to take, yeah, and um, I was running along, and I went to have a drink, and I went to pull my snood down, but it completely frozen onto my beard. It was that cold. Yeah, and so I nearly well, waxed myself. They, you, you looked like, you were dressed up like Forrest Gump, weren't you? Yeah. Beard and everything. Yeah, and... It's my turn now, yeah. 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 <laughs> like, how many marathons have you completed in total? And which one was the one you found like the hardest, the toughest one you've ever completed? It's a, it's a funny one, really, because like I don't know whether I'm technically allowed to claim the American ones as marathons. Like if if I can, then it's like way over six hundred. But then of course, like sometimes like in training and in other races, you know, yeah. uh, I've done you know a marathon or more. But like competitively, well I've done 13 London marathons, uh, so let's count them, 13, I've done Melbourne, Sydney, 14, um, Gran Canaria, 17, 16, two New Yorks, 18, two Bostons, 22, 21, and where are you getting that from? Mm -hmm. oh, no, no. And two Liverpools. So 23. Oh, yeah, two, so 20, 23, compared, and, and oh yeah, Manchester and Brighton. There we go, I forgot that I've already mentioned them, so yeah, 25 in total, and um, now I was very lucky to win both of the Liverpool marathons that I did, and the first time that happened was on my birthday, and um, Why would you do a marathon on your birthday? Hey, well, I just wanted to do a marathon, yeah. yeah. That's the best, that's the best day of his life. Yeah, well, that, to, to be honest, that one, that one probably was, you know, and, um, and so it was like, just stand on the start line. I just didn't think I was, you know, why would I think I was going to win a marathon? I never won a race like that before. And so I said to a couple of like, the fellas who were very serious on the start line, Badly. I said, well, I said, it's my birthday today. I said, like, and my girlfriend's about like a mile down the road. Like, I don't suppose you could let us like win for a bit, could you? And like, <laughs> no, no one said anything to me. They sort of like looked at me, you know, and it's just like, all right. And um, so yeah, a mile down the road, I actually was winning. Uh, Naturally. Just, yeah, I, I got overtook then, and um, and like it was about sort of mile fifteen that I uh, I managed to overtake him, and like it was again just as we went past where my girlfriend was, so she only ever saw me winning, and she didn't see the bits in between. And I said to him, "Well, thanks, mate. You just made me look really good then in front of the missus." <laughs> um, but like he just looked at me, and his eyes were dead, and I was just like. Oh my chance to go. God. Yeah, exactly. So and then, there's 23 in a 23 in a 26, 26 yeah. in a marathon. And so um, the, the fat, you know, if you're at the front quite often, like, you know, you'll have someone on a pace bike, you know, going along. Yeah. And so I said to him, um, you know, because obviously I was concentrating, I hadn't said much to him. And I said, how far is he behind me? And he just looked over his shoulder and went, I can't see him. And I was just like, oh my God. So you I don't said, talk about that much. Yeah, and and uh, and he just went. He went. Are you from Liverpool? And I went. Yeah. He went. Oh my God. 
said, that's boss. I said, what's more boss is it's my birthday. So he was riding around on this bike. And there were people like, obviously standing outside their houses around, like Alec and Roy clapping. And they're like, make some noise. This is Robbie. He's winning the marathon. And he's a scouser. <laughs> and it's his birthday. <laughs> you know, so um, you finish well, in front of the Echo Arena. Oh, and I was well, coming. M&S Bank now, yeah. Of course, yeah, yeah. So you got to get, gotta get always, the sponsorship link in. I always get that confused. <laughs> yeah. I just call it the Liverpool, like what? Liverpool Arena. The Echo are laughing because they don't have to pay for it anymore. Like, but everybody still calls it the Echo, don't they? <laughs> so, True, yeah. yeah. It's been the Echo forgotten as well, long ago. Yeah. Now it's... It's going to be advertising, but uh, yeah, like my missus had got to the finish and she told so them that. Uh, the ones then, yeah. Yeah, the and then um, going down the final straight, like everybody is about like, 300, 400 people there, and they all sung happy birthday as I was going down the final bit. So uh, that that was. It's one way to win, win a marathon. Exactly, it? the only way to fly, mate. <laughs> right. so I found out something about your miles. The, how much miles you did. That would have co- that would have been six hundred ma- marathons. About that, yeah. yeah. I, I think it sounds better than twenty five, doesn't it? So we'll call it six hundred and twenty five, eh? <laughs> yeah. All right. So, well, how's your box of chocolates? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, the funny thing is, I was on. It was only on my fifth crossing. Um, I got pulled into. I was in a staying in a motel for the night, and I got a phone call from reception saying. You know, and it sounded like pretty, you know, Miss Pope, could you come to reception, please? And I was just so, oh, God, what's this about? And um, so I, I went there, and I thought it because, like, I'd sort of ran across a motorway. And so I thought, like, maybe Jane sort Walker. of, uh, well, yeah, I thought sort of some copper had seen me or something like that, you know. And it was just a couple, and they said, we, like, saw you running earlier before, and we thought he looks like Forrest Gump. <laughs> so... We've uh, got you a box of chocolates. He said, we, you must get this all the time. I said, you're the first pe- people to have done it. <laughs> and the, the only other uh, person who got me a box of chocolates, um, you know, like the telly programme this morning. Yeah. Oh, so yeah. Uh, Eamon, Holmes, <coughs> Eamon Holmes actually um, got, well, he got my missus to go to the shop and uh, buy me a box of chocolates for the interview on air. And then they came in like that. Never even paid it in the end. Love you know, it, so, if I bump into him again, I'm like, you, you owe me a tenner. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, well, I've got some extra questions. I don't know oh, about you. Have you fluff? But, like, how much determination... <laughs> Bit of my beard. <laughs> <laughs> how much determination or courage, like, does it take to complete one of your larger runs, like marathons, uh, yeah, the main one in front of us, yeah. And how much does it take? Well, I guess it takes a lot because not that many people have done it. But uh, the the thing is, I'm always a pain to stress. But I don't think sort of I'm, I'm anything special to do it. And so, like, this is like a run. Everybody said it was impossible that, you know, yeah, it couldn't be not. done. You know, so uh, now it's a bit of a coincidence that the first person who tries to do it manages to do it. So, you know, it's not that like so I'm particularly special, it's just that, you know, people, you know, we've got an incredible ability, every single one of us, to surprise ourselves, you know, and once you set your mind to it, if you're just like, I'm not going to let this thing beat me, you know, because we, we said before there were enough times where I wanted to quit, yeah. like whether it was the injuries, whether it was the time when I went to pay for a, like, a hotel, um, and I only had like $34, like it was just like 30 quid in my bank account in the world you know and stuff yeah. like that and um but you just you just find a way you know if, if you want to succeed you you've got to find a way and you will find a way yeah do you want to read that last one out to make it even then <laughs> <laughs> probably read it um the trip across america seemed to be a huge accomplishment accomplishment yeah. Oh, I think I might have a better run or something here. Yeah. You see, I came prepared. I've done two. Yeah. I've wrote oh, it out oh, twice. There we go. No, I mean, I already wrote them two weeks Eamon ago. Eamon Holmes will be looking over his shoulder, not just for that ten quid, but uh, <laughs> for his job. You know what? Yeah. I, 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 I can't. Don't read it then. Yeah, you just do it. So, yeah, so, like, your, your Trouble Across America, your Forrest Gump run was clearly one of your biggest accomplishments. But, like, have you ever thought about doing another activity of this type. I know you said like your yeah, Australia run. 
to any other countries you would like to do? I, I, you know, Europe would be great. I still think I've got unfinished business in America, though, because like I ran through 43 of the 50 states. And so you need so, to go through the other seven. Well, yeah, like sort of, the, well, there's Alaska and Hawaii, which are the outliers, you know. Yeah. Um, but what I'd like to do as well is, um, like, the, the root of the whole thing, it looks a bit like a whale, you know. And um, there's, a, there's a few states I actually want to, I want to run through them, but I want to join it to the root. So basically it's almost like one big circuit in the end, like you know. So. It. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So it's like the whole thing. And so I've got South Dakota, Iowa, West Virginia, Rhode Island. It's only tiny Rhode Island, that's all right. Uh, West Virginia and... Oh, so West Virginia, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Florida. You not done Florida? Uh, no, I didn't do Florida. I started about 50 miles from Florida, but I went in the other direction. Oh, um, oh. And somewhere else. Las Vegas? South Dakota. Las Vegas is in the Iowa. state. Is it? That's in Nevada. I went through Vegas. Yeah, yeah. I had to go through Vegas. So, Vegas is in America. Oh, well. that's right. I've done them all. Yeah, though, though, Vegas is great. You know, it's a really cool place. I managed to run down like the Las Vegas Strip as the sun was coming up, oh, gosh. and there were lots of people who were still there. What time did you have to wake up then? Uh, that was probably about sort of half five in the morning. Yeah. So you run for about what eight time? Hours? Do you wake up normally to get up and run? Oh, well, I see, well, because I've got a little and now, I'm, I'm having to start getting up earlier, but I'm just not a morning person, never have so been, you know. Bad. I saw many more sunsets when I was running than I saw sunrises, that's for yeah. sure. But the funny thing is, it was, um, obviously Vegas is f famous for the boxing, um, yeah. you know, and so um, Carl Frampton was fighting, I think, Leo Santa Cruz that night. And so there were tons of uh, Irish over in Vegas for the fight. And as I was uh, leaving, you know, to go out for my run, yeah. some of those lads were just coming in from their night out. And that wasn't even the night of the fight. And I spoke to some of them because I was staying in a, at the Excalibur Casino, which looks like a you know big, like sort of magical yeah. castle thing. And some of the lads who were still sat there at the bar, they were just going, oh, no, we're just going to stay up for the fight. And I just thought... I thought I'm doing an impressive feat of stamina, these guys, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Right, that's, well, that's all of our questions, mm -hmm. but still got a couple more minutes, our Mal. Yeah, a couple more minutes. I, I noticed there, Rob, that you said there was loads of people at the finish. Yeah. What was the publicity style? What was it like? You know, was it gripping? How did they accept you in America? The, the people in America are great and the unfortunate sort of thing is like sort of um, and like you know it does not that I'm trying to plug the book but the book isn't really about you know running and stuff like that that was just how I travelled and the thing you know there's some hints there but mostly it's just about saying like you know how incredible the people are in America and because we see all the stuff on the news and you'd think that everybody's mental over there, you know, like sort of, you know, like storm in the capital, yeah. you know, and you see like a lot of hate and a lot of nastiness out there. But of course, that you know, it exists, unfortunately, it's, it's the world we live in. But yeah, the vast, vast majority of people, and whether they were from the south or the north, whether they were rich or poor, whether they were a Democrat or a Republican, there was just a lot of kindness there. And like sort of, maybe it's that they're not harnessing that in the right way uh you know and stuff because the media says you know sort of oh they've said this about you and they're doing that but if they actually started talking to each other more i think you know that would solve a lot of the, the problems brilliant now this is the third interview and just to finish off rob you've had umpteen interviews after you've done your run and all your marathons this is probably the first interview that you've had with a couple of kids on the, their own podcast show. I thought these Tell were trained professionals. Seven <laughs> 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 Yeah. So what, what do you think of the way they portray themselves tonight? Oh, I think he's a fantastic, you know, sort of an, uh, I, I, I can see like a whole new Ant and Deck thing coming <laughs> out here. There's, you know. four, there's four of us. Oh, there we yeah, go. Yeah, we've got Ben and Oliver who... Well, it was meant to be the, Oliver. The Beatles are <laughs> podcasting, you know, yeah. that's what Boy. it is, yeah. And you've got the haircuts as well, happy days. Yeah, yeah. and the t-shirts, they love yeah. it. Yeah. Rob, honestly, we can't thank you enough for coming thank in. You. I'm taking the time out to come in for the kids. They were being eager. You've got a book there. Did you want to tell anyone or anyone who's interested in the book? Would well, you like it's called Becoming Forest. And it's about it. sort of a... Here you go. 
become a forester. It's about my journey and not necessarily the running journey, but um, I hope it's one that it's a time of year where we all need a bit of hope, isn't it, yeah. around Christmas and stuff. And so if you've got anyone in your family that you can't be bothered thinking what to get them for Christmas, get a copy of that. And everyone's a winner. <laughs> and then, there you go, everyone's a winner. Yeah. Now you can run to the shops and get it. There exactly. you go, I'll yeah, that for yeah. the pub. <laughs> Rob, it's been a pleasure. Dan, yeah. well done. Jamie, spot on again. Yeah. Thanks very much for tuning in to the Cheers, Kids Rob. Voice Box and the Grassroots Weekender Show. We thank our guests, obviously, all the time, and they do a million things to make the kids happy. And just to take the time out makes a massive difference. So if you're one of these celebrities that we're after, then please... Get on board with us and give the kids yeah. the excitement that they deserve. Thanks very much, Rob, for coming on the show. We'll be back again tomorrow at 7 pm. Myself, Mal Lee, all the team here at the Grassroots Show, the Kids Voice Box, and Rob Pope. We'll see you tomorrow at 7. Have a great night. Good night. God bless.